in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Mission Catastrophe on Sovereignty. Hey everyone, I'm Danny, Sovereignty's Community Manager. If you haven't already, I need you to pause this video to download and create a free Sovereignty account. You can do that by going to Sovereignty.com install. There is a link in the description and check the video link here if you have any questions about that process. We are going to click ready and load into the game. If you have any questions about how to create a table to start a game on Sovereignty, I've linked that video here as well. And check the description because I have all the timestamps for this video, so if there's something specific you're looking for, you can go ahead and jump ahead. Welcome to Mission Catastrophe. The goal of Mission Catastrophe is to escape the ship before it blows up. This is inevitable. It's going to happen. So you need to make sure you are the one that escapes in the competitive mode. If you're going to play the cooperative mode, you need to all make sure you can escape in order to win. We're going to continue with the game setup. I'm going to go ahead and confirm this ship layout. And then we are going to play the Soul Survivor, which is the competitive version of this game. If you have any questions about the co-op game, go ahead and check out that official rule book. You can always click on it in Sovereignty here. I will mention a couple of things that maybe co-op has throughout the video, but if you want to go ahead and check out how to play that co-op mode, you can always just launch into Sovereignty. It's going to guide you through how to play and what's going on. But if you want to check out that manual, it's always in the app as well. I'm going to finish setup here. We are not going to be playing the hard mode and we are going to not be playing under pressure. If you have questions about those specific as well, go ahead and check out that rule book. So we are going to use the standard locations and we're going to go ahead and confirm. Woohoo! Now we get to choose our characters. Blorp is best. I am biased, but Blorp is best. Blorp was the first character I've ever played in this game. And I think from there, that's the only player I've played in this game. I love Blorp. Okay. Next, what you're going to be doing is you're going to choose your roles. So what's awesome about this game and the characters is the characters aren't necessarily specifically a role. They are just the character and then you get to choose what role you want to play as that character. So for example, I can choose the captain and then choose whatever captain role card I want to play. So I'm going to choose, let's see, I will choose this one. I'm going to use the bridge. Okay, and then Alexis will get to choose a roll card. All right, and then the dice are going to start to roll. Whenever the dice roll a number, that number is what's going to get hit on the ship. So I roll the seven. So the seven location is going to get hit. We are rolling to see who is going to go first. But, of course, as we're doing that, the ship's getting hit. Well, let's see what Alexis rolled. Also rolled a seven. So that engine room has already been hit twice, which is kind of scary. So now it's my turn again. Now you can see that hovering around the life pods is, oh my goodness, the engine room got hit three times in a row just by setting up this game. That is crazy. Okay, when the engine room gets hit, if it doesn't have power, it takes out power to the life pods. So you can see that there is no electricity. There are little sovereignty has them hovering above each of the ships. So you can see that there is no power to them. So in this game, it is competitive, but sometimes you're gonna do things that might actually help other players. Like I'm probably gonna go repair that engine room, but it's gonna benefit Chad, but that's okay. Cause we, I need it to be working as well. So on your turn, what you get to do is you have three actions. You can move, you can draw a pip card, which are helpful cards. Let me just look at what pip cards I already started with here. Okay, so these are the pip cards that I start with. You can hold up to seven of these pip cards. They're always going to be helpful. Like for example, this Eva here. The Eva allows you to move from one location to any other location. Anytime you see this handshake icon, that's telling you that's the co-op version of the game. So if you're playing the competitive version, make sure you're not looking at that one. Um, and then this is the scavenge card I have. So if you want to know what all those icons specifically mean, if you click on inspect and then inspect this reference card here, you right click and hold as you kind of spin the card. So I'm holding with my mouse, right click, hold, drag. Then you can see all the iconography on all of the cards. So if you ever need to reference that, you can go ahead and reference that. On the front side of that card is going to show you all the locations have something special about them. So the crew quarters actually doesn't have anything special. Then we talk about the five, six, seven, and eight, which are the green, red, 
orange and yellow locations. When you use those modules, you're going to get a resource that corresponds with that type. In order to actually win this game, you need to have one resource from each of these four locations and you need to get onto an escape pod, which I'll explain in a little bit, but that's what those ones do. The operations room allows you to draw three pip cards, keep one, um, and then the others go to the bottom of the deck. Maintenance allows you to remotely repair any other module. The laboratory allows you to con convert any non-resource pip cards, these are the resource ones, any non-resource pip cards into one resource. So if you really need a green, you can convert if you're at the laboratory. Cargo Bay allows you to take any one pip card from the discard pile. Teleporter allows you to move to any module or move an ally to the teleporter. The bridge allows you to set the fuse. You need to be able to set the fuse of the correct escape pod in order to actually escape. I'll show you that in a minute. And the sensors. You can remotely look at any escape pods. On the back of these escape pods is letters. So it's A, B, C, D, E, or F. And then you can see over here, location 11 is the bridge. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Above the bridge is this here. This is your fuse. So let's say you look at the bottom of an escape pod and you know it's B. You're going to want to set the bridge to B and then get on that escape pod in order to actually escape. When you look at an escape pod, the whole table cannot see it. If you're in a co-op mode, everyone is able to see it. But Soul Survivor, you are not able to see when other people look at an escape pod. In order to look at an escape pod, you just need to be on the location adjacent to the escape pod. If a location that is connected to an escape pod loses all of its power cubes, so like in this example, the engine has lost all of its cubes. If that happens to any of the locations adjacent to the escape pod, that escape pod gets lost. So it is gone from the game forever and you cannot get it back. So you wanna make sure if you know what escape pod you're escaping on, it stays there. Otherwise you gotta figure out which one is which one. Now what also is gonna happen is there's gonna be cascade effects, which actually happened in this scenario. The engine room got hit three times in a row. If the last cube from a location has been removed, it's going to set up a cascade. That's why maintenance has also lost a cube because when this third one got removed, maintenance also got one removed. So on your turn, back to your turn, you can draw your pip cards, use a pip card, you can move, um, and you can activate that module. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move to maintenance. I don't need to extend time. This game allows you to extend time. If you have a card that you want to play, make sure you click on that extend time right away. So like if you're knowing you're gonna override somebody's decision, which is one of the pip card options. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you hit extend time so that you're able to do that. All right, we move to this location. That's one of the things we can do on our turn. We can use a module once per turn. So I am gonna use this module. This module allows me to repair any module. So I am going to repair the engine room. Okay, and then there we go. And then I'm also able to repair the module I am on if I want to. So I'll do that. Okay, so it's taking the cubes from this ship here and then placing it here. If the ship, here's how you lose this game. If any, everyone can lose this game this way. If the ship ever is full of all those red cubes, so that means the one has a red cube on it. So it's going to start all the way up here. It's going to go green to yellow to red. Once this one has a red on it, the whole ship explodes and everyone loses. In the competitive version of this game, Soul Survivor, one person can win, but everyone could lose. So the game could still win if the whole ship blows up before anyone's able to escape. In the co-op version, um, everyone needs to be able to escape and then, um, but you do lose if the ship does explode. Okay, so. Let's kind of review a little bit how you win this game because I kind of went over it in bits and pieces. So how you win this game, you need to set the fuse to a correct escape pod. So let's say I know that this one here is B and I know that I'm gonna escape through it. I'm gonna wanna make sure that this charge is set to B and I'm on this location that's connected to it. 
So set the fuse. Second thing you need to make sure you have is one of the resource cards from every one of the four locations. So from you need an orange one from the engine room, you need a red one from the life support, you need a yellow from navigation, and you need a green from the lighthouse. So then they are actually up here. They're currently in stacks. So like for example, the yellow, you need navigation codes in order to escape and survive in space, right? Like you don't know where you're going. You need food rations because you need food. You need to have power packs because you want to make sure your escape pod doesn't run out of power once you escape. And you need to have an oxygen tank. So you need to be able to have some air when you're on that escape pod. So one of the resource cards from every location, set the fuse and get off the ship before it explodes. If you are the first person to do it, you're gonna win the sole survivor mode. If you're playing co-op, you need to have all of you make it to your own individual life pods in order to escape. All right, I will show you just really quick what it looks like to view an escape pod and to draw one of the resource tiles. So I am going to our engine room less power again, but for the sake of example, I am going to just move to life support to show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna move down here. And then once we're turned, you're able to use the module. So I'm gonna use the module to draw one of the red cards. And you can see that now I have them, okay? And then I'm going to view the escape pod. So when you're on the location adjacent to the escape pod, that's when you're able to view it. Don't worry, Chad's not gonna be able to see what I see but let's take a look so this is life pod or escape pod d and so when i if i want to escape on this escape pod i need to make sure that the cube is charged and on the d location otherwise i'm not able to escape so i'm going to say done okay i have to remember that that's d and then i'm going to pass and that is my turn so one other thing i want to show you before we wrap up this video because that's pretty much it is on your cards here, so on your player ability cards, on the left-hand side, there are going to be either green, red, or yellow lines here. So mine has yellow and red, and I think Alexis has, yeah, Alexis has one that has green, yellow, and red. What this means is whatever colors are on here are what you're able, or when you are able to use them. So on the ship, there are those, like I said earlier, the green, yellow, and red locations. When you're on the green, if your card has green, you're able to use your ability. So on my card, when I only have yellow and red, I'm not actually able to use my ability until we are in the yellow and the red of the ship being broken down, basically. And that's pretty much it. That is Mission Catastrophe on Sovereignty. This game is incredible for replayability. There are so many different ways to play this game. You can set up different ship layouts. You can have different numbers associated to different locations so that if you keep rolling sevens like we did, you don't necessarily hit the engine room every time. But there's different ways to play co-op. There's different ways to play the sole survivor. There's so much replayability in this game. It is fantastic. So this game is Mission Catastrophe. It's from Cardboard Alchemy. It plays one to six players. So invite your family and friends to play with you. Again, you can play that co-op mode or the competitive mode, or go ahead and check out that solo mode. If you're looking for a group, join us for a game night. This game plays in about 30 minutes. If you have any comments or questions, please post in the comments below and check the description just in case I missed anything. I'll be sure to post it there. If you have questions about the Sovereignty app camera controls, I've linked that video here as well. And if you've liked this video or found it helpful, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Happy gaming!